uh, you know, they got kids were motivated for several different factors there. Well, uh, you know, it, it looked like from a, a coaching perspective, we're down 14 to 7 at halftime. We had a couple of turnovers there, uh, one in, uh, uh, on a running play, another on a kickoff return. Uh, but just exactly what happened at halftime, I know that coaching staff got together, you, you uh, challenged your kids, you told them to leave it on the field. But, but also as far as X's and O's, uh, you know, you and I talked about Randy White being upstairs and uh, making some adjustments. I know your guards and tackles blocked a little differently, but it seemed like uh, our running game particularly was a lot more effective in the second half. Well, I, I think that one thing offensively, we did we did change a couple of blocking schemes that that we wanted to do things a little bit differently on that may have allowed us to uh, be a little bit more successful offensively. But I think as much as anything it is that our young men did take a challenge to, to one, protect the football and not put the ball on the ground and have turnovers because, you know, we really felt like that was the only thing that stopped us in the first half was our own turnovers in in that game and then penalties, and then we went ahead and had some penalties the second half, but were able to overcome them. Now, many times, you know, you won't be able to overcome a big holding call, which which is something that, that we've got to emphasize and get corrected because they're very difficult to uh, to overcome. I think that we, you know, we did some things in the kicking game. We, we went away from kicking off deep and went to a food kick that I think was turned out to be effective for us to uh, – to set up a little bit better field position because in the first half, you know, we really gave O'Brien some great field position that they had a short field to drive. And then uh, then the second half, you know, we scored every time we had the ball other than the last series when we ended up taking a knee at the end of the game in our victory formation. So, uh, you know, we were very pleased with the way that our kids responded there at halftime. And uh, so, we, you know, we hope that we can continue to do those type of things in the future. Coach, we're up. Uh, they're up 14 to seven, and we come back out and we score three touchdowns and and go up uh, 28 to 14. Uh, then it seemed like uh, they went to their no huddle offense, and in one series there, with about seven or eight minutes in the fourth quarter, were able to drive down the field and put some points on the board, whether it's controversial or not. Then tacked on a two point conversion. But then when we got the ball back with a little over five minutes left, uh, we really did a good job of eating up the clock controlling the football, churning it out. You know, uh, Blake had some good runs. Rodney had some good runs. Uh, you know, uh, tailback had a, had a great run there. But we, we uh, secured the football and uh, just ran the clock out there. You know, O'Brien, it was a well-coached team. They did a lot of good things, especially uh, uh, on offense and uh, with their special teams. And so uh, uh, that was a big drive for us to come back after they would scored eight points and and cut it to a six-point game to take that ball down the field and run the clock out. Well, you know, that, that was a really big series. You know, we, we wanted to see them either us put points on the board and go up by more than one possession or them not get the ball back, and, and that's exactly what took place, was that we were able to maintain possession of the football and actually in that series was able to do that, you know, on first and second down. You know, they had a couple of guys that were out of the ball game, and we were able to pick up on that up top. And so we were able to, uh, you know, their defensive right tackle was out of the game that last series, and we were able to pretty much say we're going to run the ball to our left to maybe a younger player, a weaker player to that side, and they were just unable to uh, to stop us at, the, at that location. So we continued to do that. But I thought it showed a lot of character for our young men to realize that you know, if we keep the football, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to score. And, and so maintaining possession that last series was a huge part in that ball game. You know, this is uh, second week in a row we blocked a punt. And a uh, young man that's a sophomore, you and I talked about this earlier, old cliche that for every sophomore you start, uh, you, you might lose a ball game because of that. But we're starting a ton of sophomores, and a lot of those guys have stepped up. Uh, you know, Tyler Rogers uh, blocked a punt and had, had some tackles. But, you know, the other night, uh, an old player that you played with at Tennessee and went on to play at Dallas, Bill Bates, uh, uh, Blake McAdams. Well, you don't talk about him very much, but uh, the other night I think he played from an old coach's perspective about as good a defensive ball game as I've ever seen a free safety play. 
and that may not all be good because when you have your free safety, uh, I charted the tackle Saturday morning on the replay, had him with about 18 or 19 tackles, 16 of those unassisted, a couple of them on kickoffs that he had to make tackles on the sideline. But, uh, you know, Blake did a great job defensively. He didn't have to punt the ball all night. Uh, we didn't throw the ball a lot, but... You know, the people down at Ole Miss may have to take a look at that film. And, uh, you know, no, he doesn't have the 4-4 speed, but, uh, you know, he, he does remind me of a Bill Bates. And on the college level, playing a strong safety outside linebacker type, uh, they may want to sign another punter. Well, you know, Blake is, is, is a young man, of course, that has played a great deal of football for us here. And, and you know, I, if you picked out what was his best position and that was the only thing that he was going to do, you know, playing defense would, you know, could very likely be that. And uh, so, you know, they do have some decisions that they'll have to think about and take a good look at And because he, he is a really good defensive player that that understands the game, that allows him to get in position to make tackles, and then just has that innate ability and desire to get to the football. And, and like I say, after we broke down our film, you know, he ended up with 18 tackles this past week. And, and like I say, you know, that that's a ton of tackles. And, but, you know, we, we have a, you know, high expectation for him. You know, he's one of our senior leaders. He, Marquis Robinson, Rodney Stewart, Davion Richmond, you know, those four guys are seniors that have played. And, and you know, we, we expect a lot of them, and, and we think that they're doing a good job right now, each one of them. I talked to Blake one day this week. Uh, and, you know, you don't want that to happen every week with your free safety making that many tackles. And I know we've got some young corners that uh, have got to contain and turn the plays inside, but we're looking forward to uh, them growing. They've intercepted some passes and seem like they play a lot better on pass coverage. But this week, uh, formidable challenge with a big running back from uh, from Haywood County. Uh, they've got a lot of seniors. We You just mentioned before, uh, that they, in much the same situation we were last year with a lot of college prospects, same team they had last year, basically. But this Jacoby Bonds is a big running back. A lot of Division One people are looking at it. And, and also, with this game, you know, a lot of the older people here liked it when we renewed the Haywood-Ripley rivalry. But a little local flavor as far as from Lexington, Tennessee, with uh, a former player that you coached, and I know you coached with him, and his father, Jim Stowe, uh, was a legendary coach there at, at Lexington for 30-some-odd years. And uh, I know you put personalities aside when you start a ball game, but uh, uh, got to be some, some emotions running with your old high school coach that's uh, over there, and then you coaching against a former player. Well, you know, I, I think that those, you know, those are factors that, that you think about prior to the game, maybe after the game. You know, I think during the game all that goes out the window and you really don't don't consider any of those things beforehand. You know, I've told, uh, I've told a lot of people that, you know, I, I've known Bart before he started lying, which mm -hmm. was before he ever started talking. So, uh, mm -hmm. so you know, I, I've known him forever, known his dad since I was, since I was young. And uh, Bart's doing a really good job over there at Haywood. He's, he's, he's got a program that traditionally is one of the better programs in West Tennessee and always going to have some great players and some great athletes. And he's been around the game of football his entire life. So he's doing a good job with them over there. And, and uh, you know, they're players. They have some really good players right now. You mentioned their running back, Jacoby Bond. I think he probably led all of West Tennessee last year in rushing. Uh, you know, has, has a lot of colleges looking at him. He's a little different than most of your high school backs in that, you know, he is a big back that still has breakaway speed. So we really have to do a great job of game tackling and pursuing the football, good pursuit angles, and playing our defensive responsibility and then getting 11 people to the ball. And I think that's going to be one of the key factors in this ball game tonight. You know, Bart was a graduate assistant at Memphis for several years. And uh, uh, last year, I know he was a little down and out when he came over here. He, he was 0-3, starting off with losses to Covington, uh, Dyersburg, and us. Uh, but they still had a good ball team and wound up going to the state playoffs in the second or third round. And uh, so he's done a good job there. But a little bit about the injury situation. Are we fairly healthy? No, you've got the release on one of our players that could really step up and help us in our vertical passing game. How are we physically going into this ball game? 
Well, you know, at this time of year, you know, you you're, you've got two regular season games under your belt. You've been practicing for a month prior to the season, so you're five, six weeks into pads, and you do start to have some nicks and bangs and things. And we're like most other teams in that we do have some of those, but we have a, you know, we've received some pretty good news this week. Tyler Paddock is is going to be released, has been released, and is going to be able to start doing some things. Force, uh, you know, he was an impact player for us last year. Proud to have him back. You know, we really think that, you know, we'll get a much bigger contribution out of him going into the Dyer County game than what we will this week against Haywood after he's had more practice time under his belt. Uh, Daniel Turner right now, one of our long ball snipers and outside linebackers, is, you know, he's sort of having some back trouble right now that has slowed him down some. He is questionable for the game right now. Uh, we think Marquis Robinson, which is, which has been showing some mental toughness and has been continuing to play, we really feel like he is healthier now than he's been at any point in time this year. So we're actually starting to get some, getting some people healthy. Got a couple of offensive linemen that have ankle turns and some things like that that are still able to play, but maybe not 100%. But, you know, our young guys are, are starting to grow up and they're accepting challenges, which which includes, you know, being able to 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 play with, with some injuries and some pain. And, uh, and like I say, our young men are responding well to that. Well, Coach, off to a great start. 2-0 uh, and overall, more importantly, 1-0 and in the region race. Uh, after this week with Haywood, we've got a big uh, region contest with Dyer County at home this coming this next week, and also within the next week, we'll host Memphis Treadwell, who I've heard was undefeated at this point in the season, and big homecoming game. So uh, a lot of football left to be played, and, and we've got to take them one game at a time. Welcome, Tiger fans. Game three of the 2004 Tiger football season as the Tigers take the field. Captains tonight, McAdams, Robinson, and Patrick Craig. Brownsville wins a toss, Ripley receives. Ripley coming in 2-0 tonight. These Haywood County Tomcats coming in 2-0, and, and they're by far the best team we've seen this year. Big, athletic, quick, have a super running back that everybody in the state's aware of, so uh, this this will be our toughest test of the year. Ripley will have to play a mistake-free football game to, to stay in this game, I think, Carly. Tonight's game is brought to you by the following list of sponsors. Lauderdale Lumber and Hardware, Ripley Parts and Tire, Bank of Ripley, Brighton Arms, Donnie Hatcher, Garner Funeral Home, Ripley Dodge, Bank of Halls, Cranes Pharmacy, the Ag Center, Ripley Power and Light, Thornton's Olympic Steakhouse, CAC Financial, Lauderdale County Bank, Baptist Memorial Hospital, S.N. Anthony Insurance, the Eye Care Clinic, Coles Do It Best, and Lankford Realty. And we're about ready for action here tonight. Haywood County to kick off. Marky Robinson deep for the Tigers. Expect a hard-fought football game tonight. And we are underway, and the ball will be fielded by Marky Robinson at about the 10. Running it on the right side. Going to bring it out to about the 27-28 yard line where the Ripley Tigers take over first and 10. The Mike Shannon of... High school football is going to be joining us tonight. Proud to have Randy Lankford in the booth with us, one of our sponsors. Randy's daughter is a cheerleader here. Uh, local businessman, active in the community, active supporting these Ripley Tigers. Randy, we're glad to have you tonight. Yeah, I do appreciate you giving me a chance to do this tonight, and I'll have to repay you in some way, and I'm sure I'll think of something. Just keep throwing that sponsor money at HRL TV. No problem. McAdams under center. Pierre Washington deep in the eye. Washington on the right side. Gets a little running room. Brings it across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Be good for a gain of about four yards. Bring up second and six. And, Randy, we're very informal. We call it like we see it. And any time you get ready to kick in, just, just start talking. No problem. This reminds me of back in the old days, back in the 60s, when this was such a big rivalry. It was the last game of the year every year, and, and it was always a big game in the Big Ten. 
McAdams under center. Quick pass out in the flat to the right side. Going to be complete. Going, depending on the spot here, this is close to a Tiger first down. Second offensive possession. Ripley throws a little quick pass out in the right flat, and it is good for a Tiger first down. Randy, this bunch tonight's by far the, the best football team we've seen this year. From word the word we get, they're big, strong, quick, athletic, and we know they've got a great running back, and we hear they're really good on defense. By far the best team we've seen this year. I'm anxious to watch their good running back that they have. McAdams under center. Pierre Washington around the right side. Not much there. Great penetration by the Haywood County Tomcat defensive line. Gonna be a loss on a play of about five yards. Bring up second and 15. Off the five on the play. It'll be second out of 15. I'd like to remind you that next week we'll be back in Tiny Knee Stadium. If you hadn't joined the Booster Club, RHS Booster Club, the booth will be set up in front of the field house. Membership ranging from $10 to $250. And hey, $10 will get you in. Be a part of the Booster Club. McAdams up under center. Straight drop, a lot of pressure. Ball's gonna be thrown out in the flat and incomplete. That one looked like it was catchable there by number 88, Marky e. Robinson. Kenny had hit him right in the hands. He's gotta bring those down if we're gonna win tonight. So Marky e. with an opportunity right there to pull a big one down. Could not handle it. Would have been good for a gain of about 12 yards. So Tigers looking at third down and 15 from their own 35 yard line. Big play right here for the Tiger offense. I really would like to see us get a little momentum and a little field position here early in the game. Straight drop by McAdams. A lot of pressure, screen across the middle. One tackle to break, but he cannot break it. The ball's fumbled, the bean bag is on the ground. It's gonna be a turnover. Haywood County Tomcats take over at the 29-yard line. Boy, that may be the worst thing could have happened to us right there. Haywood County has a player down, number 50. Watkins, number 50 is Chase Watkins, but he's up, walking off the field. Look like he may just have the wind knocked out of him. Sure would like to have seen us fourth and long and punting right there. That's a, that's a big turnover. Coach Mike Adams had a good call called right there. It's just they've got great pursuit. They're going to be hard to outplay. Well, we know they're quick, and Bonds, number 38, in the backfield. He's, he's the one we've heard about. Pitch to Bonds around the right side. Tackle by a host of Tigers, McAdams, Marquis Robinson, and Clarence Keeley in on the tackle. But not before he gains about six yards, bring up second down and four for the Tomcats. You know, Randy, last week we got down early, uh, showed a lot of, lot of heart coming back. This bunch could have quit on, on the coaching staff about halftime. Things really weren't going our way, but they came out and fought hard. That's true. I think that goes back to the coaching they've got. I don't think they'll quit. Bonds, a long setback. Hand off to Bonds. This is going to have tackles missed by number 42. He continues to break tackles. Now I tell you, he showed me all I've heard about him right there. We're going to have to wrap him up tonight. He's going to run through tackles if we don't. It is a first down, first down. Jeremy Yancey, a pretty sound tackler for the Ripley Tiger defense, and Mr. Bonds ran right through him on that play. Blake Adams, we're one on tackle, we're gonna get it. Kid's listed at uh, 210 pounds, and he's got pretty good speed. He's a load tackle. Yes, he does. Haywood, first and 10. Again, to Bonds up the middle. He's shifty. He's a shifty runner. On first and ten, that's a gain of about six yards. Bring up second down and four. Play. It'll be second down and six. I think this kid had over 150 yards against a good Covington defense first game of the week, so he comes as advertised. Tell you what, their offensive line's not doing a bad job for him either. No, they're not. Keep in mind, this Rick Ripley bunch is young now. They're young. They, they hadn't seen a runner like this before. I, we've got five or six sophomores on the field right now. This, this is new to them. And they're going to run him to we tackle him. Oh, 
hard to see the hard to see the marker and the spot from this angle right here. But it is going to be first and goal. Looks like the ball is spotted at about the seven yard line. Kenny, they're very one dimensional. If we can learn how to stop him, we've got a chance in this game. Well, if you remember last year, this same kid in the first half ran ran pretty much all overs against a good defense, but he did wear down. Uh, I don't guess running all overs is a good term because we had some mighty good players last year, but but he was very successful against us, especially in the first half last year. Hand off to the fullback up the middle. Not much there. No gain. Good looking stop that time by the Tigers. Maybe they can pack it in here close. Good when you see a lot of a lot of white jerseys around that football. As you mentioned, they're awful young. You know, they've got a bright future in the next couple of years. Yeah, Harley mentioned in the middle school, they had two big wins this week. Played on Tuesday and Thursday night. And off to Bonds, he's got an opening. He's going into the end zone for a Haywood County touchdown. So with 6.57 remaining in the first quarter, Haywood County Tomcats on the board. Jacoby Bonds so far has been all, all that he was built up to be. Ripley Tigers next weekend at home against Dyer County. Home game next week for the Tigers. Snaps good, down, and the kick is no good, no good. So, hey, we're a touchdown and an extra point away from having the lead in this game. No good. Did somebody get a hand on that ball that time, Kenny? I couldn't tell. I don't think. It, it just came out a little funny there. I don't think we got a hand on it. It just came out a little funny. <laughs> got a little break here. We'll get some of these sponsors in for you tonight. The Bank of Ripley Hometown Service with five convenient locations serving Lauderdale County since 1939, your full service hometown bank. Baptist Memorial Hospital located at 326 Asbury Avenue can provide all your health care needs, 24-hour physician staff, emergency room, quality care close to home. Thornton's Furniture for all your furniture, appliances, and accessories. New merchandise arriving daily. Come see Lisa and Mr. Albert and everyone at, oh, at Thornton's Furniture. Olympic Steakhouse. Why go anywhere else? We offer a great steak special every day and have the best daily luncheon buffet in town. So why go anywhere else other than Olympic Steakhouse? Donnie Hatcher Chevrolet from over in Brownsville where we're playing tonight. He says he says you can't beat his deal, so come and buy a vehicle from him. Ball fielded at about the 20, going up the right side, breaks one tackle. Some ball gonna be spotted at over a little across the 30-yard line. I think that was number 80 on the return. Trey Toss. Tiger offense takes over. They need to establish something here. Picked up one first down in the last drive, but then had a big loss on a first down play. Trying to come out from third and long, throw a little screen pass and fumble. So be interesting to see what the Tiger offense can do here. Rodney Stewart, Pierre Washington in the backfield. McAdams under center. Handoff up. A fake a handoff. McAdams comes around the left end. Breaks one tackle. Going to be out close to midfield. Ball be spotted about the 49-yard line for a Tiger first down. Blake. That was a good side, inside fake right there. We can keep doing that and get Blake on the corner. We can maybe move the ball a little bit. You know, Blake's a senior quarterback every Play. He's been the quarterback for four consecutive years at Ripley, the most experienced player we have on the field. So, you know, when, when it comes to somebody that you have to know you can go to, he's the most experienced man. Yeah, and it's good to see he's going to get to play on the next level. He's he sure earned that honor to do that. He rushed for over 100 yards last week. Blake's a tough kid. I mean, he, he really is. He's, he's a tough football player. He's under center. He brings his Tigers to the line. Going to be straight drop. He's hit. This ball's going to be intercepted. <laughs> Tigers attempting to go deep. The defensive line, just too much pressure on McAdams, and they hit him, and the ball flies out. Looked like a dying quail there as he got hit as it came off of his hand, and the defense takes possession of the ball again for the Tomcats. 
We overcame the turnovers last week at O'Bine, but if we play, keep turning over against this good team, we won't last tonight. We're going to have to cut down on turnovers. Now, this team's too good to get down 14, 21 points, do we? Uh, this defense got to make a statement right here. And that may be pretty hard to do with this Bonds kid running the football. And here he goes again, right up the middle. Right, Another broke tackle. Fumble balls on the ground. Recovered by Brownsville. Might be the only reason he didn't score right there. Not only is he a good runner, but you look at those holes that this offensive line's opened up. They're doing an excellent job up front. So this Tiger defense right here has got to stiffen up. Uh, they, they really need to keep these Tomcats out of the end zone if they want to have any chance later in the game. Tell you, that, that Bonds kid, he's really got some good moves, too. He's an elusive runner. Second and one, handoff to the fullback up the middle. Ball be spotted at the 45-yard line. That'll be good for a Tomcat first down. Here's the A few more of these sponsors in. Ripley Dodge Jeep for a car that fits your needs, plus dependable service and parts. Come by and see us today, located on Highway 51 in Ripley. The Bank of Halls, the oldest bank in Lauderdale County. See Joe McCarthy and everyone at the Bank of Halls for all of your banking needs. First and 10, 5.05 remaining in the first quarter. Haywood County up 6 to nothing. Ball at the 45-yard line. Handoff again up the middle of the fullback. Breaks one tackle. Ball be spotted at the 37-yard line. Good for a gain of about seven. Bring up second down and three. Coles, do it best home center. One of your sponsors tonight. They've got their big uh, anniversary sale going Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They have Clay Milligan, a uh, Champion top fuel dragster out there. Uh, a lot of other things going on. I'll tell you about in just a minute as Haywood comes to the line. Now, there's a good play. We finally stopped. We finally dropped Bonds for a loss right there. That was a good, good tackle. Good play right there. Number 33, I know he's a sophomore. Taylor. Boy, he looks like a football player. Now, out at Coles this weekend, they're also going to have clinics and wallpaper hanging, lawn and garden. They've got a $500 grand prize. They've got a lot of things set up for the kids, a moonwalk, bungee jump, concession stand. Money's going to go to the Tina Turner Center on Sunday, I know, so that's a good day. Fake a hand off. He's going to throw it. Drop straight back. There's a block in the back right there. We got a flag on the play. There's the pass is incomplete. There's the flag on the play. So it was third and six. What are you going to do? Fourth and six. Back them up. You can make them punt that football. That's what you want to do. Ball spotted at the 45-yard line. Block in the back. We could see that, and Coach Mack does decline it. Going to bring up a fourth and six, and the Haywood County punting team comes in. I think you're right, Randy. It just don't give them another chance. Just make them punt the football. Let's just watch out for the fake right here. We moved the ball well the last time we had the ball. Again, let's keep the ball in our hands and move it down the field. Ripley sends the freshman back to receive the punt. He's going to be standing at about the 10. Be Cole McAdams to receive the punt. It's a good snap. Punts away. Long, high, wobbly kick. And it's going to bounce inside the five. Oh, they better touch it. Down at about the half-yard line. So I don't know how you can do any better than that. That's an excellent punt. Excellent punt. And, and Cole McAdams didn't have any chance to go field that ball. He did the right thing there. Now, he had to stay away from it. From there. If I remember right, that ball was spotted at the 45. Is that right? Correct. So... 45, 44-yard punt. Real good high school punt right there. Ripley Tigers got their back to the wall here. Sh certainly can't afford a bobble right here, Randy. Not at all. We do it here. We're down 14 to nothing quick. You turn it over here, it's like giving them a touchdown. Ripley defense looked a little better on that stand. Uh, Taylor came in on the big play on Bonds, and uh, 
was glad to see that. So, got a spread offense, one running back. McAdams under center, quarterback sneak. Hit hard by a host of Tomcats. Going to be good for a gain of a two, maybe three yards. They have to be real careful here not to get tackled in the end zone, so they're going to have to kind of move it up. Straight up. I think, well, yeah, you can look at the stick over. That ball was spotted. It looked like inside the one-yard line. Looked like Blake moved it out there about three yards. Going to bring up second down and seven. Right. Yeah, you don't even have room from there to turn around. When you hand it off, you're two yards deep in the end zone. We might need to hurry up and get this play off. 250 remaining in the first quarter. The Tomcats up over the Tigers, six to nothing. Ripley pinned deep in their own in, uh, territory. And the Tigers gonna take a timeout right here and think about it. Timeout, Ripley. A few more of these sponsors in. Country Chevrolet over in Covington. Come by and see Tim Castello on all the bunt. He says he's got the best deal anywhere around. The Lauderdale County Voice, your local sports coverage, the best, says Jay Heath, the editor. Jay's on the field tonight. I've seen him down, a big sponsor and a supporter of Ripley Tigers. Ripley Parts and Tire, they carry Dayton, Uniroyal, Michelin, and Laramie. They offer tire repair, towing, brakes, alignment, sh uh, shocks, and struts. Eddie and Paul and all the bunch at Ripley Parts and Tire go by and visit with them. S.N. Anthony Insurance, tailored for all your insurance needs since 1907. They offer SR-22 filings, fire, auto, boat, life, hospitalization, bonds, homeowners, crop insurance, mobile homes, and businesses. Come on, see Norfleet and all the gang at S.N. Anthony Insurance. Located diagonally on the square from another one of our sponsors, Lankford Realty. We may let him put his own ad on tonight since he's in the booth with us. We can just let him stay up here at halftime and talk, Harley. Yeah. Ripley Tigers, second down seven. Deep in their own territory. McAdams under center. Fakes it, running it around the right side. Just not much there, good pursuit. But I'll tell you what, boy, one, it, just one man can't hardly tackle him either. You know. You better wrap him up. He'll run right through you. He's a good athlete. I thought he was going to be tackled for a gain of about one, and he moved the ball on out for a Tiger first down. First down for the Tigers. That's a big first down there. Big first down. Big, big offensive push right there by the Tigers. Two nineteen remaining in the first quarter. Ripley trying to scratch their way out of a hole here. They're down six to nothing to these Haywood County Tomcats. McAdams under center, fumbles the football. Ball's on the ground. I think the Tigers retain possession of the football, but boy, that's a wasted down right there. That just wasn't a good exchange between the quarterback and the center. remaining in the first quarter. Second and 14 has a loss of four on the play. Ripley comes to the line. Blake's going to try it around the right side, but boy, there's nothing there, and he takes a big hit right there. Going to bring up third and long from deep, deep in their own territory. A few more of these sponsors. Cranes Pharmacy, come by Cranes and see Barry Bates. Dwight Weaver, you deserve the quality and service you always get at Cranes Pharmacy. Brighton Arms in Brighton, see John Evans, John Seagrave at 243 East Kenwood Street in Brighton, Tennessee for all your firearms, ammunition, just whatever you need. Go down and visit those guys. We're appreciating them sponsor this program. Kenny, you may look for a quick kick right here. This would be a good time to do it. Blake punted out a, a good call there, Randy. Boy, you had that one pegged, didn't you? That was an excellent time to call it. They were playing it up close. It was a good time to get it out of there. Blake moves back in the shotgun position on third down and, and gives us a little quick kick. Moves the ball out to the 42-yard line, 43-yard line. 
where the Tomcat offense takes over first and 10. T. Ripley, Ripley probably dodged a bullet on that, on that second offensive possession by the Tomcats. Without a doubt, they've just got to cut out on these turnovers. They were lucky not to give it to them on the five yard line that time. Haywood County offense moves to the line. Bonds alone setback. And he's coming around the right end. I tell you what, this kid's pretty unbelievable. He runs the ball down to the 25 yard line. He took a pretty good shot right out he's there. A hard run runner. He kept those legs moving, just ran through these tiger blocks. First and 10 for the Tomcat offense. That very well could be the last play of the first quarter. Tigers down six to nothing. Clock under five seconds. No play. Didn't get the play off. Looked like they had a little counter action, a little misdirection call right there. Handing the ball off to number 21, but the clock expired. So at the end of the first quarter, Haywood County Tomcats, six. Ripley Tigers, nothing. Tigers probably lucky that they're not down more than six to nothing right here, but you know, we're not. We're only down six to nothing. We need to hold them out of the end zone right here. We're still a score from getting right back in this ball game. Yeah, cut down on the turnovers. That's going to be the big thing for Ripley. The rest of the way through. Got a few minutes here. We'll run through the rest of these sponsors because we really appreciate them sponsor this program. Eye Care Clinic. Come by to the Eye Care Clinic today and meet Dr. Orwick. It's friendly staff on Highway 51 North in Ripley. Excellence in eye care, our promise to you. The Ag Center in Ripley, come by and visit the fine folks at the Ag Center. They've been our hometown John Deere dealer for over 32 years, located on Highway 51. Our host sponsor, HRL TV. Call Ron or Jimmy if you have any ads you need put on the radio, if you want to talk about anniversaries, weddings, church bulletins, anything you need to get out on local TV, just call the guys at HRL TV. They'll be glad to get it on for you. Lauderdale Lumber and Hardware, see Kenny or Tom, any of the confident staff down at Henning, we'll make that short drive to Henning worth your while. We really appreciate your business. Locally owned and operated, Lauderdale Lumber and Hardware. Garner Funeral Home. Here for your family, serving Lauderdale County for over 57 years. So as we start this second quarter, Tigers down six to nothing. Haywood County Tomcats threatening again. It would be really, really important if we could hold them out of the end zone right here. We may have a timeout, Haywood County. That's great. That'll let us mention the rest of these spots. Ripley Utilities would like to thank all their customers who support the Ripley Tigers. I'd also like to remind you of the many services they offer to their customers. Financing of a new heat pump, gas heating or cooling unit, large electric and gas appliances, water heaters, triple glass replacement windows, and they have a payment plan to fit your needs. Call them at Ripley Utilities, your full-service company. CAC Financial Partners, located on the square. For your investment service, insurance, and financial planning, see Jack Moses and his experienced staff on the square. Securities offered through Stern AG Financial Services. Lankford Realty and Hardware. Go by and see Randy and all the gang for all your real estate needs. Make your dream home become a reality. Lankford Realty located on the square or call 635-5511. Randy, would you like to say anything about those fine folks at Lankford Realty? Oh, great. Great staff. Great staff. Nothing but good deals. Just come by and see us. Randy says come on by. He, he might not can beat his deal. Hand off to Bonds around the right side. Breaks one tackle. Breaks two tackles. Ball carried across the 20-yard line down to about the 16. Very impressive running back. He's he's coming as advertised. And he pretty much is carrying the load for this Haywood County bunch, too. You know, if they, they give it to the full back occasionally, just to keep the defense honest, but for the most part, he gets the ball. 
and understand the support. <laughs> Harley said he knew why they gave the ball to Mr. Bonds over there. Second and three for the Tomcats. Ball spotted at the 16. Gonna roll out to the right. He's got a little running room. Here's the ball carrier. Tackled by a host of Tigers. Gonna be good for a first down, though. Blake thought he may have fumbled. He, I, I never saw a beanbag hit the ground. Give me a first down for the Tomcats. So ball spotted at the 12-yard line. Randy, these Tomcats threatening again. They are. It'd be big for the Tigers to hold them out right here, hold them to a field goal attempt at least. Tomcats come to the line. First and 10 from the 12. Handoff up the middle of the fullback. He breaks one tackle. He's inside the five, close to another first down as he just took the fullback, took it, ran right up the gut. Rodney Stewart checks in for the Tigers on defense. Patrick Craig checks out. Patrick, one of our captains tonight. Uh, go measure this one. They're not... Give them a chance to get a little break. Administrators at Ripley High School. Your principal's Bobby Baker. His, he's assisted by Joe Bridges, bomb driver, and Sean Kimball. Mr. Bridges also doubles as a baseball coach and, and the athletic director. Joe does a good job. He's busy at every home game. He's busy scheduling events for every sport, not just baseball, and he's a pretty doggone good baseball coach. Randy, your son played for him last year, played for him the year before when we were state champs, and I like the kid Joe and tell him he was 10 base hits from being a state champ last year because he had a heck of a team. I know they were disappointed. They didn't do better, but, boy, I tell you what, my hat's off to them. Tell you what, that was an exciting year to go through, the year they won the state championship. Uh, Joe and the rest of those guys will never forget that. I thought last year, I, I really thought they were just as good a baseball team. We're just, we didn't, we, we missed the hits from some of those boys the year before. Like I said, we're three or four hits away from, I'm talking about having a really super year. One game away again. Haywood County to the line. Jacoby Bonds, and he's in the end zone. I'll tell you, this, this Jacoby Bonds, he, he's the real deal. He's a hard runner. He never quits churning his legs. And, I, and just, you know, one, one man can't hardly tackle this kid. So 10-10 remaining in the first half. Haywood goes up 12 to nothing, and they'll go for two here. This Ripley offense, they really don't have a choice now. They've got to come out and establish something on this next possession. Tomcats to the line. Little busted play right here. He's got a little room. Tackled by Blake McAdams on a good defensive play right there. The PAT attempt is no good. Good job of the defense stringing that play out there so they could get to him and wrap him up. So with 10-10 remaining in the first half, score remains Tomcats 12, Tigers 0. Reminds you again that uh, Ripley at home next weekend for a regional match against Dyer County. Ripley freshman away Covington this week. I'm not sure who uh, the middle grade school plays, but they play at home on Tuesday night. They're coming off of two big wins this week, their regular scheduled game and the makeup game. So the uh, Ripley LMS looking good. Mention these cheerleaders for you. They work mighty hard every night. Captains this year, Lindsey Jackson, Melissa Bailey, and the sponsor, Stephanie Bolton. Your cheerleaders for this year, Brittany Henson, Jenny Hankins, Marley Sigmund, Lindsey Jackson, Melissa Bailey, April Lankford, Jessica Treadway, Amber Smith, Anna Sanders, Robin Graves, Caitlin Harrison, Sky Hickey, Andrea Ennis, Catherine Carpenter, Paige Emerson, and Emily Dennison, and they do a mighty good job. So we'll see what this Tiger offense can muster up here. We've had some success, but like Randy said earlier, we just cannot turn this ball over. Ball going to be fielded by Rodney Stewart. He comes out across the 30, takes it around the right side. Big hit. Ball spotted.
it at the 33-yard line where the Tiger offense takes over. First and 10. That was Taylor on the return. This Haywood County bunch will stick you guys. Hey, well, that's a good field position we've got this time. Maybe we can do something on offense. I think it's real important right here. I don't know that we have to score, but I think we have to get a little field position here and pick up a couple of first downs and shorten this ball game up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Blake brings him to the line. No need to panic. Hand off up the middle of Pierre Washington. Breaks one tackle. He comes around the right side. Pretty good block across his midfield. Now that's what we need to see right there. Well, I thought it might have been one, but the official was standing right on top of it. I guess it wasn't. Pierre, I think he's going to come into his own this year. He looked had uh, spurts last year, really looking like a good running back, and this year I think he'll really show up by the end of the year. I think you're right. I think he's a real talented running back. He just he just needs a little time, get a little season. He's a good hard runner. He fumbled on the first play last week, but he came back and played extremely hard the rest of the game. Runs hard. It's going to be a five-yard penalty right here on the Ripley Tigers. Going to back them up. Like you say, they haven't been any quit in this team so far this year. I think we'll see the same thing tonight. Dead ball. Oh, offsides on the Tomcats. I well, now, I'm doing a lot of talking and a lot of less less looking there, Holly. Won't you won't you correct me there before before I say something wrong like that? <laughs> Makes you human. Hey, Blake's gonna come out of a shotgun right here. We hadn't seen this, but I think we're gonna see a little motion right here. Well, I'm not gonna say what I think. Let's see. Uh, let, wait a minute. Let's see what happens. I think it's going to be first and ten and not first and five. Though. Like, Looked like Rodney Stewart bobbed a little. Yeah, or maybe the right tackle uh, kind of fell back out of his stance a little bit there. I tell you what, I see Tyler Padded in the game. Uh, Tyler, Tyler's been hurt all year. Been uh, been out. Had really just really just started practicing a little bit this week. We're really glad to see him back. Tyler's a good-looking uh, player on the baseball field, too. Real good outfielder, good ball player. Good all-around athlete. Yes, he is. Good attitude. McAdams out of the shotgun. We a handoff up the middle to Pierre. Pretty good runs. He crosses the 40. A gain of about six yards going to bring up down second and four. So, hey, Tiger offense moving the ball a little. We've moved it. We've looked pretty good at times all night. Yes, they have. This will be a good time to take it all the way down and, and score here before the half. Number 44 in the ball game. That's Tyler Rogers. He's a transfer student in here. And uh, he had a big game last week. Blocked a punt. Uh, did a good job. Danny Joe Edenfield gets set. Mike Adams under center. Big hit by number 10. Hey, number 10, he read that play all the way, Kenny. What anything Mark he could do then. Really good defensive play right there by number 10 from the Haywood County Tomcats. Miles Matheny, number 10. He act like he'd seen that in a film somewhere, didn't he? Hey, what these they, these Tomcats brought a crowd over here tonight. I think they packed their home stadium. Tigers got a good crowd. You know, that's a pretty good road crowd right there, guys. You mentioned something earlier, Randy. Ripley and Brownsville, 20 years ago, not only a big rival game, it was one of the premier high school football games in West Tennessee. Yes, sir. You're talking about crowds. Back in the late 60s, it was the last game of the year, and it seemed like I was a kid then. It seemed like it was around 32 degrees every time we played. And always meant something when we got on the field with each other. I can remember one night, I don't know, I must have been fifth, sixth grade. Of course, everybody... Back then, it seemed like everybody went to the high school football games on Friday night. You know, there, there weren't 100 places to go, you know. 
Exactly. Well, you couldn't get in your car and go to the Olive Garden or to the mall in Dyersburg then. Everybody went to the football game on Friday night. Of course you did. And we drove over here one night, and I, I'm like, you know, it was sleeting. It had to be 20 degrees. It's the coldest I've ever been in my life. And I don't think he'll mind me telling this, but the one thing I remember is Rufus Smith was sitting in front of us, and I remember him being bald-headed and how cold his head must have been because I was freezing. Big, big play right here for the Ripley offense. Sean, we're going into a little bit different offensive set here. Pierre up the middle. Going to be down to about the 40-yard line. Gonna be fourth and five right here. 7.56 remaining in the half, and here comes a punting team. So with seven with seven forty five remaining in the half, Coach Max not gonna take a chance right here on giving him great field position. He's gonna try to pin them deep. Ball spotted at the forty two. I think Turner's doing a long stab, but I didn't see him come in, but he's been a little hurt. Mike Adams hits one, and it's gonna go. The end zone into the end zone for a touch. Boy, I thought it was going to bounce right over that pylon from here. So, 42 yard punt for Blake McAdams. Uh, here, Washington hustled down there and tried to keep that back in play, but uh, it's good hustle on his part. Tomcats take over first and 10 from the 20. Uh, no big secret, don't think I'm speaking out of line here. Everybody's pretty aware that Blake McAdams is committed to the University of Mississippi and probably will be doing a little punting down there for the Rebels next year. I would say so. I bet he'll get on the field to start with as a freshman. They have a graduating senior, and I think Blake's got the talent to step right in there. Hand off up the middle. I tell you, it takes, it takes a whole Tiger defense to bring him down. Be a gain of about three yards, maybe four. Don't be surprised if Blake doesn't get on the field in another way before he leaves Ole Miss playing football besides punting. He's a, he's a good athlete. They may find another spot for him also. Gain of five on the play. Second down and five for the Tomcats. 6.43 remaining in the first half. Tiger defense needs a hold right here. Straight drop by the quarterback. He's coming out here in the flat to this side. Pretty good tackle right there. Good coverage there. Yeah, it was. He was all over. I thought he might break away, but he couldn't. Chris Graves held on to him and got him out of bounds. Chris had two interceptions in the first game, ran one back for a touchdown. So bring up a big third down play right here. Boy, how sweet it would be if we could hold them right here and punch one in the end zone and and go in at halftime down 12 to 7. That, that'd be nice. First quarter with old Mo there. That'd be great. Haywood County to the line. Motion from the wide out on the right side. Rolling right. Pretty good pursuit. He's wide open out there. Going to be good for our first down. Blake McAdams in on the tackle. Boy, there wasn't anybody close to him on coverage. Not right at there. all, not at all. So, Haywood County keeps possession of the football, first and 10. Ball spotted at the 38-yard line. Keeley checks into the line up on the far side for the Tigers. Come to the line. Six minutes remaining in the half. Busted play. Little handoff up the middle there. Just not much. A pretty good pursuit by the Tiger defense. <laughs> Clock continues to run under 5:45 in the half. Tigers tw trail 12 to nothing. You know, Randy, you, you hate to be down, you hate to be behind, but from what I'd heard, I'm really not surprised. I'm not, not surprised. Not at all. I'm impressed with Ripley hanging in there. Again, the early turnovers have cost us a little bit, but uh, hopefully we can correct that and, and maybe come out and win this game. 
a lot of young players, a lot of inexperienced players, there, and they're still learning. They're getting better every snap. And, and this running back over at, at Haywood County now, he, he's pretty unbelievable. Second and seven for the Tomcats. Handoff up the middle. That's Bonds again as he crosses the 50 down past the 40 to the 38-yard line. Boy, he's so quick off the right out of the gate. He's hard to bring down. Pick up a 23 by Bonds on the play. The Tomcat offense continues to march toward the end zone. We're under five minutes remaining in the first half. Haywood County offense to the line, straight drop. He's going deep right here. He's wide open. Tomcat touchdown. The boy quarterback put it right there. Good looking offensive play right there. He was. He stuck behind the defensive back and uh, he was wide open down there. We really did not need that to happen right here before halftime to us. We this this will be a this will be a this is where the coaches earn their paycheck right here at halftime trying to keep this young bunch of Tigers pumped up enough to come out and play and perform in the second half. 39 yard touchdown pass for the Tomcats with 435 remaining in the first half. Haywood County 18, Ripley nothing. Tomcats go for two. They're going to give it to Bonds, and I would too, and he's in for two. 20 to nothing, Tomcats. Remind you again that tonight's broadcast is brought to you by the following list of sponsors. Lankford Realty, Coles Do It Center, the Eye Care Clinic, S.N. Anthony Insurance, Baptist Memorial Hospital, Lauderdale County Bank, CAC Financial Partners, Olympic Steakhouse, Thornton's, Ripley Power and Light, the Ag Center, Crane's Pharmacy, the Bank of Halls, Ripley Dodge, Garner Funeral Home, Donnie Hatcher, Brighton Arms, the Bank of Ripley, Ripley Parts and Tire, Lauderdale Lumber and Hardware. Tennessee Volunteers have an off week this week. Al uh, Ole Miss travels to Alabama. To Alabama. I, I still hadn't got my schedules yet, but... Uh, the Rebels from Ole Miss traveled to Alabama. Arkansas State, I think they've got another tough one this week. We keep up with Arkansas State. They're going down to LSU to play ba uh, Baton Rouge to play LSU. Easy game, easy game. Yeah. Of course, we've got a player from our high school team last year starting for the Indians over at Arkansas State, so we try to keep up with them. Little pooch kick, and it's going out of bounds. 435 remaining in the first half. Tiger offense takes over first and 10 from the 35-yard line. Memphis plays UT Chattanooga, and they play at Memphis, so a home game. Home game for the Memphis Tigers tomorrow. Probably the best team Memphis has had since they've been down there. They got a really good football team this year. You know, I don't know if I've ever heard anybody on ESPN mention University of Memphis Tigers, and I've heard it several times lately. They, they talk about how potentially strong they are on offense. They've got that D'Angelo Williams and, and Wimp Ryan at quarterback, but they're, they're, they've always had a good defensive team, and they're a sound football team this year. Without a doubt. Lee Corso, I think, has got them picked to go undefeated. Now, he's made some strange picks before, but he may be on top of this one. Hand off to Pierre Washington up the middle. Not much there. Uh, be tackled for no gain. This bunch of Ripley Tigers got to play hard. 422 remaining in the first half, and they got to finish it playing hard. Be, be wonderful if we could score a touchdown right here before halftime. Kenny Haywood's a much improved bunch from last year. You know, Ripley manhandled them over in Ripley last year, but this is a different looking football team here. You know, they showed signs last year being a really good football team. Just caught some bad breaks and, and I think had an injury or two. But uh, but this Haywood County bunch is for real this year. Look at that line. Once again, handed off to Pierre Washington. He can't break this tackle. We tackled for a loss in the backfield. That play, that play just didn't really look smooth right there. 
scores from the surrounding area. Jackson Central Mary 20, Jackson Southside 0 in the half. Combo 3, Liberty 0. Milan 21, Texas Manassas 0. That Milan bunch continues to roll. Wow, what a shocker there. Gibson County 14, Crockett County nothing. I don't think Gibson County's won a game in uh, what? Four, 35 games. Yeah. yeah. I mean, three years. Now. Over three years, and uh, that Crockett County bunch, they've been state contenders here for the last couple of years, so that's a huge shock. McAdams straight back. Pass is intercepted. bit overthrown right there, but I tell you, boy, a lot of pressure on this quarterback back here every time. Cook, number 21 for the Tomcats, picks the ball also. Guys, all we know for right here is 20 to nothing at half. That's the best case scenario right here. We got to see if this Tiger defense can hold their head up and finish this half out. They would not going to be settled for just uh, running up the middle right here. They're going to try to score some points before the end of the half. Tomcats come to the line. There's close to three minutes remaining in this half, so there's plenty of time. This defense has got to stand up here, hand off up the middle. Pretty good hit right there by the Tigers. I think that was Marquis e. Robinson right in the middle. remaining in the half. Kenny, this Ripley bunch has really got to bow the neck right here. This is big, big time of this ball game. This is character building time right here. You're right. Here comes Jacoby Bonds around this side. I tell you, he's a load. He's a load. That was number 42, Yancey. He ran through him earlier in the game, but he did a pretty good job of wrapping him up right there. Good job by number 42, Yancey, on that play. Clock under two minutes continues to run. Patrick Craig checks out of the Ripley defensive lineup. Tomcats looking at third and six right here. Ball spotted at the 44-yard line. Number one under center. Straight drop. Got a little pressure. He's going deep. Ball going to be batted down on a good defensive play, and, oh, he might have hit the ground a little funny. He's getting up mighty slow there. Number 14 is Wade Vandegrift, another sophomore. He's a good-looking player, Kenny. He's got a bright future here for the next couple of years. You know, Wade, Wade's the backup quarterback on this team, and I was watching him the other day. Uh, I know his little brother really a little better than I know him, I guess, but... Uh, Wade was warming up and throwing the, throwing the ball. Looked really good passing the football. The freshman phenom checks in to return this punt. He's at the 10-yard line. Flag on the play. Legal procedure on the Tomcats. Ball's going to go down to be spotted at about the 13, 14-yard line. We'll make them kick this one again. 120 remaining in the half. Good job by the Tiger defense that time. That could have really shut the door on this ball game if they'd let them run the ball down and score it in just before the half. You know, we came out after halftime up at Obine last weekend and scored 21 consecutive points, so, you know, it's not over till it's over, and that's why we line up and play them every Friday night. I'm sure Coach Mike Adams will have some good words for him at halftime, try to get this young bunch back up, and we'll see a different team second half. Well, I guarantee you, if you were in there, you'd hear positive comments. He won't take them in there and beat them down. He'll, he'll try to pump them up and, and find something positive that he, he can tell this bunch. A lot better punt right here. Fair catch call for and made at the 23-yard line. Good job by the freshman right there. Yeah, it looks like they had the block on and almost got to that one. You know, if he misses that ball, it may roll inside the 10, or if he fumbles it, they've got it in good position to score. So, much, real good job there by the freshman. Over the green wall. In front of the stadium, please. 
Please do not stand or stand in front of the wall. From the stadium, please. Thank you. PA announcer telling them, do not stand in front of the wall. There are about 100 of them down there, and not a one of them moves. So may have turned the speakers up over. Oh, now they're getting on down out of the way. One thirteen remaining in the first half. Tigers down 20 to nothing. He's going deep to Rodney Stewart. Ball's almost picked off again. That'll stop the clock with 106. Actually, I'm a little surprised to, to see that play. He may have uh, tried that for one play. He may pack it in now and take this into the half now. Ripley got a good crowd over on the Vester side tonight. Those cheerleaders working hard. Football team's playing hard. They, they just got a, I guess they got a Tomcat by the tail instead of a Tiger tonight. Big hit in the backfield right there. I'm telling you. Kenny, that didn't fool anybody. Number 50 was in the backfield. He, he almost could have taken the handoff. He almost got the handoff. <laughs> <laughs> Number 50 and 95 just been told on the Tomcat line there, brothers. Good looking athletes, too. I'm going to ask him in a minute if they're happy over here. We got a few rental houses empty over in Lauderdale County. We might move them on over. <laughs> Third and 13 for the Tigers. at the 15-yard line. 14 seconds remaining. The Tomcats have the football. They, he fumbled it. He put it on the ground. Now, this could be a killer. Tiger offense having a terrible time holding on to the football tonight. We just had turnover after turnover. We said, but we said beginning of the broadcast, we had to protect the football, and just you know, it's a lot easier said than done. Take the fumbles out of this ball game, and it's a whole different game too. Fourteen and a half seconds remaining in this first half. This Tiger defense needs to make two big plays right here. How about an Austin? Flag on the play. I tell you, it's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. Gonna be, a, gonna be interference on the Tigers. Gonna be declined. Catch made by Singleton. So the fumble is, is kills the Tigers. Tigers fumble with 14 seconds to go in the half on the 15-yard line. Tomcats take one play and stick it in the end zone. Ripley Tigers in trouble here tonight. Good snap. It's down. It's up. Kick is good. So, with eight seconds remaining in the first half, Ripley down 27 to nothing. These Tomcats giving us an old-fashioned whipping like we hadn't seen in a while, boys. They're kind of manhandling us right now. Remind you next week at home, if you haven't joined the Booster Club, we need your money. Get by and join that Booster Club. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing what a difference a year makes, guys. 
Griffey lost a lot of good players off that team last year. Of course, they're playing on the next level for a reason. But uh, again, this is a young team. They're going to be back. It's a short kick. Fielded by Pierre Washington. Breaks a tackle. Breaks two tackles. That's probably uh, one second left. Second and a half left in the half. I'll tell you what. I don't think uh, we're everybody knows we're not quite as good as we were last year. We don't have the athletes, but this Haywood County team's twice as good as they were last year. Yeah, I agree with that. We're we're down a notch, but they appear to be up too, so and you said something earlier, Randy, but you know when you put when you put six and seven sophomores on both sides of the ball and play them all night in a game like this. Somewhere down the road, it'll reap benefits and dividends for us. We will be better. There's number 50 again. I'll tell you, our offensive line pretty much took a thrashing in that first half. Yes, they did. You know what my old saying is, don't you? If you, if you can't block him better now, we're going to let the tackles and the guards run the ball in the second half and the halfbacks and the fullbacks block for them. So at the half, Haywood County 27, Ripley nothing. Be back in just a moment for the second half of Tiger football action.
Welcome back to the second half of this Ripley Tiger Haywood Tomcat football game. Haywood brought it to us pretty good here in the first half. Ripley tra trails 27 to nothing. Tigers will kick off and put that potent Tomcat offense back on the field to start this second half. Uh, don't know exactly what you would say to them from a coaching standpoint. Uh, a lot of turnovers in the first half opportunity to uh, run the clock out and we turn the ball over and give Haywood one cheap touchdown but uh, you know they pretty well earned the rest of them take this take this young bunch pump them up get them ready to play and let's just hold our head up and come out and do the best job we can do in the second half look like we're gonna do this little pooch kick ball's gonna hit the ground at about the 40 and go down Ball down at the 41-yard line where the Tomcat offense takes over first and 10. Kenny, they're just going to have to forget that first half. That's all the way they can look at this. That was just a bad half of football. They're just going to have to get better this second half and work toward next week. That's right. No, hey, nothing we can do about that one. Learn from your mistakes. Pick it up. Let's go. Tiger defense checks onto the field. Bond's a deep man in the set. He's going to get the first one. He runs it right up the middle, breaks a tackle, breaks two tackles, cross midfield to the 49-yard line. Going to be a gain of about nine. You know, you never hate to lose a game. You never want to lose, but what you have to realize, too, is this is a non-region game, and we play all year come in the proper positioning in our region to give us give ourselves a shot at the state playoffs 
You never hate to lose, but if you got to lose one, you definitely want to lose a non-region football game. Hand off again to Bonds on the right side. Breaks one tackle, breaks two. Saving touchdown by Blake McAdams. Kenny, that's a good-looking running back there. You know, that, that kid has really improved since last year. Talking to the PA announcer at halftime, asking him what, ki uh, what schools were looking at him. He said every SEC team was after him, and Oklahoma was interested in him at the fullback position. So that's about all you need to say about him. If you have any question about how good he is, that answers all the questions that you need to know. This kid's a football player. First and 10 for the Tomcats. Handoff up the middle of the fullback. Pretty good job right there by the Tiger defense. Going to be stopped for no game. I understand there was a correction on the Gibson County game. Correct, Carly. Uh, the Gibson County game we announced in the first half was obviously at that time it was Crockett County 14, Gibson nothing. The score at halftime was Crockett 28, Gibson 0. So tonight won't be that first win that they've been waiting on for a long time. Second 10 for the Tomcats as they come to the line. Ball spotted at the 30. Bonds around the right end. Breaks one tackle. Take, takes three to bring him down. He's a load. He is a real good running back. Harley, I'm going to say something to you that you may not have heard me say in a long time. Been a well-officiated game tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what day is this? <laughs> <Here's the head. laughs> Official timeout. Remind you again that tonight's broadcast brought to you by the following list of sponsors. Lauderdale Lumber and Hardware, Ripley Parts and Tire, the Bank of Ripley, Brighton Arms, Donnie Hatcher, Garner Funeral Home, Ripley Dodge, Bank of Halls, Cranes Pharmacy, the Ag Center, Ripley Power and Light, Thornton's, Olympic Steakhouse, CAC Financial Partners, the Lauderdale County Bank, Baptist Memorial Hospital, SN Anthony Insurance, the Eye Care Clinic, Coles Do It Center, and Lankford Realty. Got Randy up in the press box with us tonight. Glad to have him along. Appreciate him sponsoring this program this year and supporting these Ripley Tigers. <coughs> They need to hold them here, try to bring up a fourth down. Third and five, rolls out to the right. He probably can run and pick up this first down, but he's going to throw it. Pass is going to be complete. Big hit by McAdams. Probably a hold right here. We got a flag at about the 33-yard line, and it is holding against the Tomcats. Yeah, holding number 52 back there. Pretty good hit right there by Blake McAdams. Boy, you won't find any quitting him either. So this hold's going to bring negate that good pass play by the Tomcats, bring it back 10 yards. Well, these Tigers never quit last week when they got down, and I, I can assure you they won't quit playing. Now, they, the other team may, may handle us tonight and beat us, but our boys won't quit giving 100%. Coach, too well. Quarterback straight drop. He's going deep again. Pass is almost intercepted and then almost caught. Should have been intercepted right there, Randy. Chris Graves had a shot at picking off his third uh, interception of the year. So the Tomcats will be forced to punt. Ball spotted at the 38-yard line. Tigers probably will, if the ball doesn't go in the end zone, will be pinned deep, deep right here. Cole spotted at the 10-yard line. If it goes over his head, he knows not to touch it. Good job getting that end zone. Tigers caught a break there. They could have very easily been pinned in their ten, inside their 10 that time. So the Tiger offense 
takes over with the ball on the 20 yard line. 8.47 remaining in the third quarter. Ripley Tigers down to the Haywood County Tomcats, 27 to nothing. Tell you what, Randy, a few points on the board look mighty good right here. Yes, they would. Big confidence builder for this young team. Number 12, Tyler patted out wide right. Sure glad to see Tyler back on the field. Pierre Washington tackled in the backfield. I'm telling you, the defensive line's in the backfield before we make a handoff right here. Rip is going to have to go to some kind of counter action to try to slow that defensive front down a little bit. Boy, they're blowing through right now. I, we, they, they're just uh, they're firing off a ball. They got, right now, they're defensive line playing a little more hard than our offensive line because they're beating them every play. They're daring us to try to throw the ball. Tell you what, they got some big boys on that defensive line, too. They do. There's an offside right there, number 50. We need that five yards, too. Ripley bringing a good crowd over here to Brownsville tonight. Unfortunately, hadn't had a whole lot to cheer about. You know, the turnovers really hurt us in that first half. We didn't really, we didn't play great football, but but the turnovers re really, really hurt us. A different ball game. There's a fumble right there. Ball's on the ground. Haywood's got it. We 95 on the ground for Tomcats. I'm gonna I don't know what happened right there. Blake never got the ball. I, I saw the snap and the ball just shot forward. I'm not sure what happened there. Tomcats have a player on the ground. We hope he's not injured. Number 90, 95. Coaching staff out to check on it. That looks good. He's up, standing up on his own, under his own power, and he's going to walk off the field. Good for number 95. It looks like this is not going to be a serious injury for him. Tomcat quarterback brings him to the line. 7.52 remaining in the third. Here goes Bonds up the middle. Tackle at the 14th. Gonna be good for a gain of about 16 yards. Be a first down. Seven forty nine remaining in the third quarter. Tigers the Tigers need to catch a break. They need they need they need Haywood to turn it off. We just we need a few positive things to happen to finish this night off on. Bonds up the middle. Not this time. Tiger defense doing a good job right there. Kenny, you know, defense hadn't played a bad game at all tonight. Just again, we say it over and over, turnovers have just been killing Ripley tonight. Loss on the play of one brings up second and 11 for the Tomcat offense. Ball spotted at the 16-yard line. Six fifty-three remaining in the third quarter. Fake the handoff. A lot of pressure right here, and a big, big play right there by Wade Vandegrift. Big play. Big play. Vandegrift made the tackle for the Tigers. Wade's just a sophomore, too. Now, he did a good job right there. Nice job, Wade Vandegrift. Nice job. Big loss. Brings a third down and 11. 
Tiger defense held them last time. Correction on that third and 11. It's third and 25. Third down and 25. Look at this thing. Jacoby Bond. Pretty good. Pretty good hit right there. Pretty good hit by Marky Robinson and Rodney Stewart. Rodney Stewart and Marky. Great job of that defense. That's about as good a job as containing that big running back as we've done tonight. Bring up fourth down. Ball spotted at the 28-yard line, fourth and 25. It's fumbled. Snap is fumbled. All in all, Tigers get pretty good field position. Ball at the 14-yard line. I think. I'm not sure, but I think when that ball hits the ground and that punter takes a couple of steps, he's free game. Our guy kind of backed off of him right there, think not to get the roughing, but he's free game after he takes a step or two with that ball like that. Hey, if nothing else, could have got a good shot on him at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well hit somebody. And... A little frustration there. <laughs> 517 remaining in the third quarter. Tiger offense back on the field. Pierre runs the ball up the middle. Gain of one, bring up second down and nine. <laughs> Tell you what, that Haywood County defensive line, defensive front's in the backfield again. I want to remind you again that the freshman team travels to Covington, 6.30, September the 16th. Ripley High Tigers at home, 7.30 kickoff, Dyer County next week, Tiny Knee Stadium. Hand off again up the middle of Pierre. Things getting a little physical out there right now. Everybody's starting to get a little frisky on both sides here. Third and seven for the Tiger offense as the clock continues to run. Be around four minutes remaining in the third quarter at the snap of this ball. McAdams brings him up. Little screen pass on the right side, a lot of pursuit. Gonna be a loss on the play. Played very well by Haywood County. So the punting team comes in. I'm not sure if we punted at all last week. We punted one time tonight. So this is an opportunity right here for old Blake. Old Blake to boom one. Get one out of here. Turn this field around. And he's real capable of it. Old Blake can boom one when he gets a hold of it. Haywood may have the, uh, the block on here. Looks like they're sending everyone. Yeah. Need a good snap right here. It is a good snap. Good long punt. Filled it at the 40. Coming wide to the right side. Got a wall. Pretty good fumble balls on the ground. It's out of bounds. Haywood's ball. Haywood's football. <laughs> You know, that, right, Randy. That, just any little, any little break, any little thing positive to to get these boys pumped up a little bit, and we just don't seem to be able to catch that break. Got a player hurt. Ripley has a player down. Hadn't been able to pick up a number. Got a little laundry on the field on the other uh, side. Of Coach McAdams out on the field. The entire coaching staff out to look at the Tigers. Mm. 
I don't know but what Coach Max not calling for an ambulance here. Yep, yeah, they're they're calling for the ambulance to come in. Sure hate to see this right here. always hate to see a player get hurt. I mean, it doesn't matter what team you're on. You just, you just really hate to see this. The coach and staff immediately went out to him, and when the first coach got out there, he signaled, and all the rest of them came to him immediately. See our athletic director, Joe Bridges, on the field. This doesn't look good, folks. As soon as we can get a number, we'll let you know who the injured tiger is. Well, we have a minute. Like to get some of these sponsors in. Bank of Ripley, Homestyle Service, five convenient locations, serving Lauderdale County since 1939. Coles do it best. They've got their big extravaganza this weekend. They've got a world-class top fuel dragster on Friday. Uh, he was out there today. I saw him as I drove by. They've got uh, all the entertainment for the kids, the moon, the bungee jump, the moonwalk, concession stands to benefit the Tina Turner Center. It lasts all weekend. They've got seminars on painting. Uh, full finishing wallpaper, just several things. Go by and visit your friends at Coles Do It Center. The Lauderdale County Bank, located in Ripley and Halls. We strive to make all your dreams come true, serving Lauderdale County, locally owned, independent bank. We love this town. We love our Tigers. The ambulance tries to still get into the field. This is not a good situation. Oh, they're bringing a stretcher on the field. Baptist Hospital, located at 326 Asbury Avenue, provides your health care needs. 24-hour physician, staffed emergency room, quality care close to home. Thornton's Furniture, for all your furniture, appliances, and accessory needs, see Lisa and Mr. Albert at Thornton's Furniture. The Olympic Steakhouse, come try our daily lunch and buffet. It's the best in town. Why go anywhere else? We offer a great steak special every night of the week. Donnie Hatcher, best deal around on a new vehicle. The Bank of Halls, oldest bank in Lauderdale County. Come by and see Joe McCarthy and all his staff at the Bank of Halls. Ripley Dodge Chrysler Jeep, the car that fits your needs. Dependable service, come see us, located on Highway 51 in Ripley. Lankford Realty, go by and see Randy and all the gang at Lankford Real Estate. Make your dream home become a reality, located on the square, or call 635 Five five one one. Broken leg. Ankle leg. I ain't picked up a number yet. First indication we have is a possible broken ankle or broken leg, and I see him wrapping. Yeah, that was Dr. Spencer right down here. Okay. And we do have a broken leg. This tiger's gonna be out for the rest of the year, but we wish him well and we hate to see this happen. And we'll get a number just as quick as we possibly can for you and let you know who this injured tiger is. Ripley Utilities would like to thank all their customers for supporting the Ripley Tigers. We'd like to remind you of the many services they offer. They finance new electric heat pumps, gas heating and cooling system, hot water heaters. They have replacement windows. Crane's Pharmacy, go by and see Barry Bates and Dwight Weaver. You deserve the quality and service you always get at Crane's Pharmacy. Brighton Arms, come by and see John Evans, John C. Gray, 243 East Kenton in Brighton, Tennessee. Make that Kenwood, Kenwood Street. The Eye Care Clinic. Come by and meet Dr. Orgwick and all of his friendly staff on Highway 51 North in Ripley. Excellence in eye care is their promise to you. The Ag Center, serving 
the area for over 32 years as your local John Deere dealer. HRL TV. Get all of Ron or Jimmy for all your local advertising or just t tune in to HRL Channel 9 on your dial for all of the local information that you might need. SN Anthony Taylor for your needs since 1907. They offer SR22 filings, fire, auto, boat, life, bonds, homeowners, crop, mobile home, and business. Garner Funeral Home serving the area for over 57 years. Lauderdale Lumber and Hardware. Go see Kenny or Tom or all the competent staff in Henning. They'll make your drive to Henning worthwhile, locally owned and operated, and I can assure you we really appreciate your business. <laughs> C Country Chevrolet, Tim Castellon and all the gang over in Coven, they say just come on over. They got the best deal around. The Lauderdale County Voice, for the best in local sports coverage, turn to the Lauderdale County Voice, where Jay Heath is a editor. For an outstanding young man, we wish him well. Jersey's off right now. I cannot tell from here who he is. Nice act of sportsmanship by the Haywood County bunch there as they go out to wish uh, the Ripley Tiger the best. We'll try to get a name uh, before we leave here tonight on the injured player. You know, those Haywood County players hate it. I mean, they hate it just as bad as we do. Nice sportsmanship there on that part. Yes, it was. <laughs> So everything after this probably tonight will seem a little second nature, but uh, 255 remaining in the third quarter. Trey Toss. Trey Toss, the injured player. Numbers, Trey. Trey Toss, number 80. Trey Toss, number 80 for the Tigers. We've just been told that it's Trey. Trey's a junior, a junior at Ripley High School. So good luck to you, Trey. Our prayers will be with you. Haywood takes over. Ball spotted at about the 31, 32 yard line. Boy, you hate to see that any time. You sure do. Hopefully it won't be too bad just uh, taking precautions there for it. Hand off to number 41. Look like they've got their backup tail back in now. Number 38's on the sideline. I see him standing right down there about the 30-yard line. He's a good-looking look athlete. Standing about the 30-yard line there. Number 38? Yeah. yeah. 150 remaining in the third quarter. Ripley down 27 to nothing. Pretty good, pretty strong run right there by the backups. He crosses midfield under the 47-yard line. You know, I think that was Trey Tice's mom down on the field. I think that was his mom now that they tell me who that was. Tomcat offense to the line, handoff up the middle, breaks one tackle. Tackle by Blake McAdams as he crosses the 40 down to about the 36-yard line. Is Miami and Florida State playing tonight? Play tonight. Yeah. yeah big ball game. Tonight. Sure is. Yeah, he 
hate to see your safety making the uh, tackles on the running backs, you know. Yeah, that's usually not a real good sign. Good thing. Hand off to the fullback, number 41. Good, hard run right there. Pretty good hit, too, defensively. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's one thing I noticed about number 38 tonight. You heard about good runners never take square shots. He did a pretty good job of not yeah. taking any shots. Now, we got some kids on this team that can hit now. That's right. So as the third quarter comes to a conclusion, Haywood County Tomcats 27, Ripley nothing. This tailback is running the ball now. I was just told for the Tomcats is a freshman, and he runs hard. So Haywood pretty well got this got this game. Uh, under control, ha really had it under control since midway through the first quarter. They kind of took took control of the game, an early turnover. Then late in the first half, the Tigers turned it over, and really the game was over when we fumbled that ball and they scored. That cheap touchdown they gave just for the half it took a lot of wind out of this team, but again, the defense is still continuing to play hard. How does an injury affect the team? Hard to say it affects different people in different ways. It'll make some kids want to get out and really pop somebody in a revenge type of way. Some kids, it'll put a little fear into them. It'll, it'll back them off just a little. You know, good player. That's right. That's right. I, and I've said this many times. I know that y'all, you work with him, and I know you know Coach Mack around the field and all, but... In a, in a negative situation like that, I would just as soon my child be playing for Coach Mike Adams and this coaching staff as anybody I could think of. Not a doubt. Absolutely. But now, gang, it had been many years till 27 to nothing would have been a victory, moral victory for Ripley. I've been on both sides of the coin here. We, we know how to take loss and, and uh, win. Hand off up the middle. Tough running right there. Hey, that's, that's little number 10 for Haywood County Tomcats. He's a frisky ball player, too. And he's only an 11th grader. His name's Miles Matheny, but uh, he's had a pretty good football game tonight. Eleven twenty-nine remaining in the ball game. Tiger offense, Tomcat offense, moving toward the goal line. Number 70 moved on this play. Gonna back him up five yards. Illegal procedure. Number 71 checks in for the Ripley Tigers. That's going to be Nicholas Kirkpatrick. Nicholas Kirkpatrick. They have support the Tomcats. Once again, I'd like to thank all these sponsors. We really appreciate you. Everybody that hadn't joined the, the uh, Booster Club will be at home next Friday night. The booth will be set up. He's selling some T-shirts and hats. Go by and let's... Number 41 slips and falls. Matheny in at quarterback on that particular play. These Tomcats starting to get a little wound up here now. Randy, I can remember when we used to have that much fun. Not necessarily at a football game, either. I think I'd pull something loose if I tried that tonight. Young kids out here dancing left and right. Big number 46. Breaks one tackle, breaks two tackles. Ball going to be spotted at about the 14-yard line. 
a big run, big run right there. So Miles Matheny in at quarterback. Starting quarterback is a senior, so Miles Matheny might be the man of the future over here next year for Brown. Hand off to number 31, straight up the middle. He's gonna be running hard. He's going into the end zone. Touchdown. Boy, he's a load too. Mr. Robertson, number 31 for Haywood County, and he's a junior. They're running some fresh legs in there. And, uh, yeah, they are. They're starting to wear down now on defense. Been out there a long time tonight. So a 9.37 remaining in the ball game. Haywood County on the board again. Tally is now Haywood 33, Ripley nothing. Got a little sidewinder kicker in there. He, the last one he was good on. Missed one earlier in the night. Good snap, it's down. I think this one's going to be good, and it is. So with 9.37 remaining in the ball game, Haywood County, 34, Ripley, nothing. Remind you again of our administrators at Ripley High School. Principal's Bobby Baker. Uh, Bobby shared the mic with me last week. Really enjoyed that, getting caught up on all the activities at uh, Ripley High School. Sister Principal's Bomb Driver, Joe Bridges and Sean Kimball. Superintendent Schools, Lauderdale County, Philip Jackson. Say you never could do that, Randy? Harley says he's going to film this and try to find out his name, and when he's about 50, show it to him. Show it to his kids while you're at <laughs> Randy, everything going good for yours up on the hill in Knoxville? He's called three times during this telecast to find out the score, so uh, they're still keeping up Ripley football up there. He wants money. What's he talking about football? He don't care about this anymore. <laughs> Send money, Pop. You that before you hung up. You tell him you're coming up next weekend? Uh, he asked me whether I have to, but I told him that I would, I would come anyway, whether he wanted me or not. I'm going. No, he's having a good time. All of them are up there having a good time in school. Of course, my, do my daughter at Knoxville starting her junior year, and she's, she's loved it every minute she's been there, so now, as long as they're happy, we can be happy. That's right. Key to keeping them happy is keep sending them that money. <laughs> McAdams handoff on the left side to Rodney Stewart. Play good for a gain of about three or four yards. Ripley just needs to keep their composure here and try to get something done, get a lot of good work done here. In the That's all. Just fin finish it up now. Now, is your daughter April? She's a senior. She's a junior. Oh, she's got to come back one more year. One more year. Well, I bet she's wishing she was up there, too, when he calls to tell all these good stories. Without a doubt. She can't <laughs> wait. Tigers to the line. McAdams under center. Pitching to Pierre Washington on the right side. Just not much there. Boy, we just, just never had a seam to run through. Never seemed to have the right break. The you know, strong Covington team didn't score any points off this team either, so uh, it's a good football team we're playing here tonight. No, they this bunch beat Covington, if I remember right, 13 to 7. That's correct. So uh, it's not their first game to play. So well. This Haywood County team, uh, Haywood's undefeated. They beat Dyersburg and Covington. McAdams under center, hand off to Pierre Washington. I talked to my brother from Dyersburg today. He said, I tell you what, they get Don't bring up fourth down and the punting team back in for the Tigers.
McAdams back to punt. Good snap. Good long booming kick. Ball was spotted at the 25 yard line. 50 yard punt. And that's why they like the way he punts a football. Seven ten remaining in the ball game. Haywood County Tomcats on offense. Ball spotted at the 15. A little confusion here. Flag on the play. Illegal procedure on the Tomcat. Mind you again, Ripley will be at home next Friday night. If you hadn't joined the Booster Club, we need you to come by and join up. $50 gets you in the Tiger Paw Club, and $25 gets you in the Quarterback Club. $10 general membership. It's up to you. Another flag. Hey! Motion here. Man. Man, a little confused here, playing while the home team's on offense. Tomcats back up in the hole here. Clock run, 625 remaining in the ball game. Ball spotted at the five, first and 20. Still well hands the ball off on the right side. Not a whole lot there, tackled by a host of Tigers. Under six minutes remaining in the ball game. No, I would say not. That, band, that band's a loose cannon right there. Haywood County looking at second down and 18. 540 remaining in the ball game. Hand off up the middle. Gonna be good for a gain of about seven yards. Gonna bring up third down and 11. Kenny Haywood's running a lot of fresh people in the game now, getting some young players some experience now. A lot of fresh legs in. Yeah. And, you know, I've said it a dozen times, these kids work their can off all week. They like to get out on that football field. Sure they do. You know these young players, and they're going to give you 100% here. They don't, they don't care that the game's over. They want to impress their coach and get some PT. And off on the right side. Pretty good tackle there by the Tigers. Tigers doing a little bit better job right now converging to the football. Robinson's played a good game in there tonight. Number 88, Marquis Robinson. Yes, he has. Tomcats in punt formation. Uh, freshman Blake uh, Cole McAdams, I'm sorry. Cole McAdams back about midfield. Punts off to the left side. Not going to be fielded. Going to be spotted at the 44-yard line. Hey, I, you know, Tiger offense needs score right here. Yeah, Ripley's got their best uh, field position of the night. It'd be nice to see them punch one in. Tomcat offense got, uh, I see a lot of clean pants out there. That's always a good sign that they've got some of their backups in. 
Good opportunity right here for the Tigers to put one on the board. And it's not going to win the game, but boy, it sure would be a morale booster for them. Look better in the yearbook. Blake brings them to the line. Ball spotted at the 44. Hand off to Rodney Stewart around the right side. Pretty good little burst right here. Rodney, down. hey, I didn't know Rodney was that fast. Good job. Touchdown, Tigers with 350 remaining in the game. 44-yard run there by the Tigers. Good looking run there. I tell you, old Rodney showed me a little burst of speed there. I didn't know he had. Yeah. I think it's just me letting him sleep on in my couch today. <laughs> He sure did. That's a good run. Time out, Tigers. Got a chance. I want to mention these cheerleaders one more time. Brittany Henson, Jeannie Hankins, Marley Sigmund, Lindsey Jackson, Melissa Bailey, April Langford, Jessica Treadway, Amber Smith, Anna Sanders, Robin Graves, Caitlin Harrison, Sky Hickey, Andrea Ennis, Catherine Carpenter, Paige Emerson, Emily Dennison, the captains this year, Lindsey Jackson, and Melissa Bailey, and the sponsor, Stephanie Bolt. Appreciate the good job they do. Hadn't mentioned a band tonight. Deepa Pasquale was up here at halftime talking to us. The band did a great job tonight, as usual. We're getting used to seeing good performances by them every week. Ripley Freshman. Covington, September the 16th, away game this week. Ripley Varsity at home. Dyer County, big region game next Friday night, Tiny Knee Stadium. Uh, Ripley LMS, Lauderdale Middle School, at home on Tuesday night, Tiny Knee Stadium. List of sponsors that bring you this game. We'll get them, get them for you here in just one second as the Tigers attempt this point after. Daniel Turner is the long snapper. I, I 